I've been thinking about this for a while. I got all these headphones right here. Look at them, man. I got a lot of headphones. This ain't even all of them. These are just ones that I think are just amazing for one reason or the other. But what if I could create like a Frankenstein headphone that would be like the best headphone, the one-stop shop, the everything set of headphones. So why not do it now? Let's do it. So I wanted to do a fun little video and take y'all on a journey and build like the perfect set of headphones for me, like straight up JDL approved, best headphones ever, the last pair you'll ever need. Now, naturally I do not have any tools here. I cannot actually build the headphones, but I wanna show y'all what I like about each headphone and what I would take from each headphone to put into my ultimate set. Now, like I said, I got a lot of other headphones outside of the ones on this table, which is telling me right now that there's, I got way too many freaking headphones. That's what it's telling me. <laughs> but there is something special about all of these that I would take out and put into the ultimate set of headphones. So let's go ahead and get started, man. Let me, let me clean up my area real quick. All right, so let's just go one by one. So first of all, y'all know I'm a freaking bass head. I cannot live, I cannot breathe, I cannot think unless I got bass in my life. So what I would do is I would definitely implement a physical bass slider. One like you would get on these Skull Candy Crusher ANCs right here, man. That bass slider is no joke. You see where I got it, right? I don't, I don't need that much. I just need a little bit right there. <laughs> but I would definitely take the bass slider out of this thing and put it into my ultimate headphones. So that's where we're taking away from the Crusher ANCs. Now, since we brought up ANC, I would definitely take the active noise canceling out of the Sony XM3s and, and drop it in my headphones. And I would also take... Mm, would I take the app? No, I'm, I'm gonna leave the app, man. I'll leave the app, but I would definitely take uh, the, the ANC, the active noise canceling out of these and put it into my ultimate set of headphones. So after we yank the ANC out of these, let's just put those down and then we bring up the Phil Divas. Oh man, these just made it into the Hall of Fame. So what I like about these is just, look at this, man. It's nothing of a headphone. However, it has a very, very high quality build to it. Like even though these headphones are super thin, super light, they have this super high quality feeling to them. So the feeling you get from these headphones, I would take from this. Also, what I would take is the ability to process the highs like these do. These, oh man, it's the sound experience out of these, it is freaking incredible, man. ANC works great and everything else, but the sound, the clarity you get from these headphones is just, it's, it's second to none, man. So I would definitely take maybe the clarity out of these headphones when it comes to what I would put in my ultimates. But then we start to run into another problem because these Parrot Zeke 2s, there's a lot of things I would steal out of these, man. Uh, so much that I would steal. First of all, uh, where do I even start? First of all, I'd yank the app straight out of here, man. The app on this particular uh, model of headphone right here, the Parrot Zeke 2 app, Huh, it's it's so much in there, man. Different EQ modes. You can share your EQ with friends like on a social media site that they have. Uh, there's music producers that have their EQ settings on there. So much to be done with this app. The noise canceling is great and everything else, but the the app is what I would steal from these. Now, these sound amazing, man. They are, they are in my Hall of Fame, but if I had to only take one thing out of these, Ah, the sound, Ooh, it's a tough one. It's a tough decision because honestly, these two are the best two sounding headphones I have as far as audio quality. The Phil Diva and the Parrot Zeke 2. So since we're taking the highs and stuff out of this, the clarity, I guess I do have to take the app from this one because it, it goes second to the Phil as far as sound, I guess. Ugh, I hate saying that, man. Don't get offended, Parrot. But then, you know, at some point, you're going to want to work out, right? So what i would do is i would take you see this perforated uh perforated headband we got here and then this ear cup see how it's all perforated is it detachable 
Yes. Oh, it is detachable. Yeah, I forgot about that. Cause when I work out with these, I actually take them off and wash them. And that's what I would do. Like my ultimate set of headphones, it would have detachable ear cups and it would come with two. It would come with like one that was like a memory foam, you know, like a, a regular, like a real memory foam. Like you get in these crushers right here. You see this, watch this. That's, that's memory foam right there. You see how slow it comes up? That's nice. Okay, so it would come with a memory foam one, right? But then it would also come with a secondary workout ear pad this, that's perforated right here. This is like that European racing leather right there. <laughs> but yeah, it would definitely have to come with uh, some detachable ear pads and even a headband, man. I, I like the headband. What if you could change out the headband in your headphones? Could you? Can you see that perforation right there? That way you can get your sweat on and you don't have to worry about getting your ear pads all nasty. So I would definitely take the ear pads and the headband from the pump. This is the Blue Ant Pump Zone. I haven't uh, done a video on these in years because they stopped selling them. And then when they brought them back, I bought these for 50 bucks uh, back in 2016. And now that they brought them back, they're like 200, $300. Now, yeah, I think these are definitely $200 worth of headphones right here. They sound fantastic and the utility is, is clutch. But man, I, I just, knowing that I paid 50 bucks for them, I, I have a hard time with the new price tag of them. But this is the Blue Ant Pump Zone. You never hear me talk about these, but this is them. And these are like my favorite workout headphones. But then, since you're working out, you need you need to get loud. Now, I just did a video on turning your music down and how you need to preserve your hearing. Sometimes you just throw that out the window, man. And when you want loud, you want the Tribit X Free Tune. These things right here, oh man, these things right here, these get incredibly loud, in my opinion. It's just, it's just stupid how many decibels these things crank out. So I need the loudness of these Tribit X Free Tunes in my ultimate set of headphones. Now, when it comes to working out, these are my other uh, favorite headphones right here. This is actually my second pair. I got another pair over there that's all dirty. I brought these fresh out of the box just for this video. <laughs> but these are these are clutch right here. If you want to just turn your music up and go into beast mode and you need it loud, the Tribit X Free Tune is where it's at. But then when it's time to be responsible again, this is where we go to the Sound Surge 85. Now, what I would take from these is the, I just like how balanced and lightweight they are. Yes, the Phil Diva is very balanced and lightweight, but here you get more feature. You get the swivel action and you get the fold action. I like the design of them as well, but what I would steal from these is the lightweight it's just, it's almost like holding nothing, even though, like look at the size difference, man. These are actually lighter just because they use metal here, which, you know, that's a compromise, man. When you're actually talking about headphone build quality, a lot of people associate metal with superior build quality. While that might be true to some people, a lot of times once you add metal, you start adding weight. And if you add a good plastic, man, like this right here, this is a good plastic. Look at this. You ain't breaking these, man. You can just abuse the crap out of these all day and nothing's going to happen to them. But yeah, I would definitely take the lightweight aspect of the Sound Surge 85, throw it into my Ultimate headphones and just keep rolling. But after doing all that rolling, you're going to want to go to sleep. So none of these headphones here are actually designed for sleeping because if you went to sleep in them and you sleep like a freaking toddler and you're going to be tossing and turning and stuff, they're probably going to break. And in some cases, like uh, I used to sleep in these and these. I used to wear these to go to sleep, the XM3 and the Parrot Zig 2s. So with the Parrots, if you move your ear, like if you lay on your side, there was this weird like screeching noise that would happen like Bleh! And I was like, it would wake me up out of my sleep. So I had to quit sleeping in these, man. I used to love sleeping in these because they're made out of metal and I didn't feel like I was going to have a problem with them breaking. But yeah, man, that whole screeching sound used to disturb me to like, <laughs> it would freak me out in the middle of the night. So these are not made for sleeping. It just is what it is. And then when you get over to the XM3s, they're comfortable, but right here, the see this edge right here, right here, if you're sleeping on your side, it just smashes up your ear, man, and it could become uncomfortable. And then aside from that, these are very lightweight and they are full plastic. And I'm always terrified that I'm gonna break it at the hinge right here where everybody complains about because I was sleeping. And that is not what they're designed for. So here we get to these Cocoon Relax headphones. See how big these ear cups are? They're massive, but they're that way for a reason because they contour to your face. Let me put these on for you so you can see them. Yeah. If you want to take a nap, you put these on, man. It's like putting two palms up to your ears like this 
and just kind of contour. See how it contours to your face and or the side of your head like that? You can sleep on your side and this just kind of, it just contours into the pillow and, and it just feels good. Now you got all this cushion right here. It just makes you feel like you're being swaddled like a baby. And these are the most freaking comfortable headphones I actually own. And as far as build quality goes, yes, they are a little bit on the heavy side, even though they're like 99% plastic, but they are built to take the abuse that they're going to take from sleeping. So yeah, they got to be good sleep headphones. So I would take the sleeping aspect, which would be the contour of the ear pad or the ear cup, I should say. And that sturdiness of, of uh, what we got going on here with the hinges and everything, it's like built for sleep. So I would definitely take the sleeping aspect from the Cocoon Relax headphones. Now, recently I've been playing a lot of games, man. And I'll tell you what, these Soundcore, uh, these are the Strike Ones. I have the Strike Three, which is made for PC and stuff. And I use those for gaming. Uh, I love the way these sound. I like this, uh, what, this is like a, a moisture wickening, cooling slash antibacterial uh, ear pad they got here. So the, the ear pad is actually normal, but on this side of it, it has like, that's just special material and it doesn't collect any bacteria and it's, it's just a nice material. But that's not what I would take from these uh, headphones right here. What I would actually snatch out of these is the mic. It is a detachable mic. This mic is awesome. I love the aesthetics of it, the way it looks, and I love the functionality of it. You just unplug it, has a little uh, um, locator pin right there so you don't put it in backwards or upside down, and it just snaps in there just like that and it's ready to go. Now, I, on the um, on the Strike 3, it does have a green LED at the tip of it to let you know that the mic is actually on, so I would actually snatch that from the, uh, from the Strike 3. And also, since it's a gaming headset, you have to have wired mode, so what I would do is uh, take one wire, instead of having two right here, I would definitely take one wire, because you know, you got your 3.5 millimeter port, and I really, really like how they have this um, this volume limiter here. I don't need it, but I, I, under, I understand why it's there. But it's got your um, your mic controls there to mute it and stuff, and then you got your volume toggle there. That's for the cord. So I would definitely snatch off the cord from this bad boy and the mic, because you definitely need to be able to play like games either wirelessly or uh, via wire on your headset. Now, as far as aesthetics go. There's something about the Skull Candy Crusher headphones, uh, like the OG Crusher, the Crusher Wireless, and I really like the design of these Crusher 360s, man. These are freaking, freaking awesome headphones. <laughs> Just awesome. Whoo! Okay, so yeah, I would definitely go with the aesthetics of the Crusher. Uh, 360. Man, I don't know. It's just something about that ear cup design that I like. And I just like how this headband is real thin. I even like the colorway, man. This brown or this tan and, and black. I, I like the colorway. You know, as far as colors, I guess it would come in multiple colors as far as my ultimate set of headphones, but I'm really good with this uh, tan right here. So yeah, I would definitely snatch the looks off of the uh, Crusher 360s and throw it in my ultimate set of headphones. Now, as far as other features, yeah, we gotta have that USB-C. Um, you know, I'm not like, you know, all into the tech specs and stuff, but yeah, you gotta have your APT, X and your HD and your LDAC and your SBC, all that stuff. You got to need all, you got to have all those codecs, right? But what kind of driver? Like, I don't know if I do like beryllium or I don't know what kind of driver, like what the material be made out of. Just give me some good stuff, right? But do I do a 40 millimeter? The Sony XM3 has a 40 millimeter and it sounds fantastic. I don't know about the size of the drivers or any in any of these right here, but I don't know, let's just go with a 50, okay? Let's go with a 50 millimeter driver. That way we can get some good thump because we did take the base slider out of the Crusher ANC and put it in there. So we're gonna need that base slider to do some real work. Now, I know it's a different, it's actually a, another driver. So in that set of headphones, it would actually be dual drivers. No, let's not do dual drivers. This is what we're gonna do, okay? So you got your haptic driver that we're taking out of the Crusher uh, ANC with the base slider, but then let's have, that's two, let's have three drivers per size. So six drivers. We got one dedicated driver for like mm, full range and base. That would be the 50 millimeter. And then you got like, I don't know, maybe a 20 millimeter 
for your mids, you know what I'm saying, on, on that one side. And then let's take like a 10, right? Let's could just cut it in half, throw a 10 up in there for them tweets. Mm. Man, we're talking about some good sound separation. Open, ooh, open back. Okay, I do love open back sound, okay? So at this point, Let's see if we could toggle because we got the app support, right? Because we got the ultimate app support from the Parrot Zeke 2s. So there would be a toggle in the app to turn on open back mode or close back mode. And then there'd be like a little vent, like a louver. Okay, let me take this like a little, like a, you know, like a little switch and it just kind of opens up the back of the headphone. That way now it's an open back experience. And then when you're done with that, you can do close back. Just go to the app and then you switch that little louver and then bam, you got close back. Like, so it would definitely go from open to close back with three drivers on each side, one for mids, one for highs, one for the sub. And then you got that extra kick from the, um, from the base slider and the haptic driver. Ooh, man. Oh, what else? What else we gonna throw in there, man? Oh yeah, NFC. Some people say that doesn't matter, but on my Sony's, I really do like having NFC just to turn them on. And this is how it would work. So to turn them on, you can either use the button if you wanted to, or you can just tap your phone to the side of your ear and then they turn on. And then to turn them off, you can just tap your phone again if you wanted to. Like the Sony's don't have that. So you tap to turn on, tap to turn off. And that way you don't have to keep mashing that button because eventually that button might be jacked up. So yeah, we definitely need NFC. Now, as far as a, a couple of nitpicky things, I definitely want to be able to swivel them and fold them for easy transport. And we gotta have a really nice looking case. I'm not gonna go into you know how the case looks and stuff like that, but I definitely want a nice uh, presentable case to go with the headphones. And then let's talk about button interface. So um, on the fill, does the, do the fill have? Yeah, the fill has touch controls and the Parrots and the Sony XM3s all have touch controls. Yes, I want touch controls. I have I used to hate it, now I love it. So yes, I want swipe up and down for volume, swipe back and forth for tracks. I want a double tap for pause and play. Um, I want like, I want a Siri and Google button, like a dedicated button for it. And what else would I want on there? Uh, I know I'm leaving something out and I'll probably remember it as soon as I turn this camera off. But for right now, I think we're there with my perfect set of headphones, man. It, it, it literally took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 sets of headphones to build my ultimate set of headphones, man. I'm. I'm kind of salivating over them right now. Those would be sweet headphones, man. <laughs> hey, let me know in the comment section, like what would make your ultimate headphone? You don't have to go as elaborate as I did, or maybe you could go more elaborate than I did. I don't care, man. I want to hear about it in the comment section. It's a pretty good topic because at some point, I don't know, maybe we'll be able to do uh, like modular or make your own headphones on a website. That'd be pretty cool, man, to be able to do all this. Well, I, I did come up with some pretty outlandish stuff to put all in the same set of headphones, but either way, I'm no expert on this kind of stuff. I just got a long ass wish list for what I want my ultimate set of headphones. So headphone companies, I got like one, I got a good six or seven manufacturers here <laughs> for headphones. <laughs> Wait a minute, is this, this is 10 different manufacturers. Yeah, so out of 10 manufacturers, if you're listening or watching this video, Hook your boy up, man. Let's get into the lab together. Let's make the ultimate set of headphones. Either way, I gotta get out of here, man. It's been fun daydreaming with y'all, but I gotta go, man. I got some other stuff I gotta do. Give me some emoji hands in the comment section and I'll see y'all at the next one. Oh, so you one of them cats that like to just run up in a place, take what you want, then leave, huh? Man, you better hit that subscribe and notification button. That way you know when I'm over here opening up new stuff. And while you're down there, you might wanna consider tapping that uh, join button and becoming a member because membership has its perks. See, that wasn't so bad. All right, man, I appreciate you. And I'll see you at the next one. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here?